Welcome back everyone. So I haven't had a chance to get out and fish much lately. I don't have a fishing video for you this week, but I've been out here doing some work to my boat and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to show you guys around my boat a little bit, show you how I got it set up. I do want to mention this boat's nothing special. It's an old boat. It's kind of rough, but I know I enjoy watching how other people's boats are set up on the inside. So I thought you guys might want to see how mine's set up. So the boat itself is a 1992 Monarch. It's 18 and a half foot long and about 65 inches wide at the bottom. If you look down the sides closely, I don't know if the video will pick it up, but it actually says Campbell County Water Rescue down the side of it. So it's an old rescue boat. It came off the Ohio River. Now, 1992 is the last year that Monarch put their name on the side of a boat. Uh, just a little fun fact here, Monarch stands for Monticello, Arkansas. From 1992 and on, everything was Sea Ark after that. So. I guess Monarch and Sea Ark are the same company, basically. They just changed the name from Monarch to Sea Ark after 92. Now, as far as the motor, it had a 115 on it originally. The guy I got it from said he had some problems with the 115, took it off and put the 70 on it. It's been on there ever since. Now, it is a little slow. Uh, top speed with a, with a full load is about 29 to 30 mile an hour. So not a fast boat, but I don't really fish many tournaments anyway, so uh, it gets the job done. Now we'll go ahead and climb up on the inside here and I'll show you guys, show you guys what I've got on the inside from front to back. So we'll start up here with the trolling motor. So it's a motor guide XI3, 52 pound thrust. Got a 60 inch shaft on it. Basically I needed a trolling motor quick when I bought the boat. Uh, I didn't really have the money to buy one of those $3,000 trolling motors that I wanted. Now these are one of the cheapest trolling motors you can find that operates with a remote control. I think I gave about $700 for this one, which is relatively cheap when you're talking, you know, trolling motors, especially remote control trolling motors. Now they do sell a kit that comes with a remote and a GPS module that goes up here. And uh, it's pretty simple to install. I think it's about 400 bucks. And I'm kind of torn between doing that and just upgrading trolling motors all together. Cause I would like to have at least a 24 volt, if not a 36. Most of the time when I'm fishing heavy current, this thing runs wide open all day, which on one battery, you're not gonna be able to run it wide open very long, you know? So I run two batteries on it. They're just in parallel. I've got two big deep cycle 12 volts wired together, positive to positive, negative to negative. Uh, if you ever decide to run two trailer motor batteries on a 12 volt trailer motor, make sure you hook them up in parallel and not series. But yeah, I keep my batteries in here, all my safety equipment that's required for the boat, life jackets, spare prop, uh, some, uh, I got a couple toolboxes in there. Basically anything that doesn't have to stay dry, I keep it in here because it's not 100% watertight. And the fuel tank's actually under there too. It's got about a, I think it's about a 15 or 16 gallon tank. I've got these little LED cubes up here, basically like my headlights, just enough light to be able to see it if you're gonna hit a log or something at night when you're running down the river. So I got a milk crate up here with 200 foot of anchor rope. That's a monster rod holder anchor that I've had for years and years. I actually won that anchor in a tournament once in a door prize. Now here's a tip for you guys that may be just getting into river fishing. A lot of you all probably already know this, but basically if I ever get in a dangerous situation, I can untie my anchor rope and just throw it overboard without having to pull the anchor and I'll be, you know, my boat will be free. And then I can come back later and get my anchor. I've also threw this in on big fish before. If you're in current and you can't pull the fish up river, you can just throw this in, the boat will drift on down the river, and then you go back and get your anchor. Now in super, super heavy current, like five, six mile an hour current, the current could actually pull this jug under. But uh, for the most part, it does what it needs to do. Now they do make an anchor ball. It's actually made for this, but it's kind of big and it takes up a lot of room in the boat. And this is only 18 and a half foot boat, so not a lot of extra room. Now I've got one of these cheap bimini tops on here. You can get these for like a hundred bucks when they're on sale, like Amazon and a few other places. It's in my way about 90% of the time, but the 10% of the time that I do use it makes it worthwhile because it'll save the day sometimes when a storm blows up or something. One of the biggest downfalls about this boat is the center console I feel is too big for the actual boat. And it just doesn't leave you a whole lot of room to walk by it, especially when I've got my rods and the rod holders here on the side of the console. 
this was originally a live well when I got the boat. I guess it still is, but it did work, but I never used it because I've got a bait tank that I use for my bait. So that's kind of became where I keep my tackle. I keep everything in plastic bags in case water ever gets in there. And as you can see, I keep my tackle boxes in there, uh, leader material, extra filters for my bait tank, sabiki rigs, but that's where most of my tackle stays. I've got another anchor right here. That's a never lost anchor. He sent this to me. He even painted it blue for me. But I got another another 200 foot of rope in there and that's where I keep my drift socks. Got my monster rod holder, hydro web net there. Cast net, I usually bring two cast nets with me. I only got one in here right now. So obviously I have more weight on this side of the boat. So I built a sinker box. And I've done a video on this if anybody wants to check it out. Now, I built mine out of steel just because that's what I had laying around the day I built it. But you could build it out of anything you wanted. There'll be a link in the description on, on the video I've done on that. So, you know, this probably weighs 100 pounds or better. It stays over here to kind of act like a counterweight, I guess. So I've got a Garmin 93 SV+. Plus. This is an older model with the GT52 transducer, I believe it is. They came a long way since I bought this one. But they're great little units, under $1,000. It does basically everything I need to do. The side scan on the old style transducer that I have is not the best in the world, but they came a long way since then with their side imaging. The mapping on them is great. They're very user friendly. They've got the quick draw feature on them where you can make your own maps anywhere as long as you have an SD card in it. And these units are live scope compatible, so you can hook up live scope to it and run it, but the live scope stuff costs more than the unit itself, so I probably won't be doing that. As you can tell, I've got these little USB ports all over my boat since I do make videos. I've got six, I've got places to hook up six chargers to, so I can charge my GoPros, extra GoPro batteries. I can charge my lights, charge my phone. Got plenty of places to charge everything. There's where my GoPro stays most of the time. That's the one I, that's the camera that I use just for getting takedowns on. And this is a light that I just recently added just to, just for filming at night. Haven't really had a chance to use it yet, but it lights everything. It lights my rods up really good. Now, I've also got two batteries inside of there. That's where all my fuse boxes and wiring and stuff is. But I got one battery in there that's just a starting battery and runs that Garmin right there. And then I got another battery that runs all my pumps. Uh, so four batteries on this boat. That's uh, quite a bit of weight for the size boat it is, but it, it seems to handle it pretty well. The boat's got pretty tall sides on it, and that's one of the things. That's one of the reasons why I bought it. It was a cheap boat, and I knew it would probably handle the big water well, and it does. It handles the big water extremely well. I've had it in some rough stuff, and I've always felt safe in it. So in the back here, that's my homemade rod rack. I got a video on that too. I'll just link all the video. I pretty much made a video about everything I've done to this boat, so I'll just link them all in the description. Uh, this thing's solid, man. It does a good job. And the way I've got it mounted, it doesn't take up any space in the boat. I can walk all the way to the back of the boat. Yeah, I've got six monster rod holders on it. Got a catfish cutting board. If any of you guys are interested in one of these or any catfish brand product, uh, there'll be a coupon code for that in the description as well. There'll also be a link to these monster rod holders down there. I've also got a couple of these cubes right here on the back of the boat. And that, believe it or not, that's the most one of the most handy things I've done to this boat. I use those all the time for casting. Uh, if I'm backing my trailer up at night in a dark place, I'll flip those lights on and I can see to back up in my truck and it doesn't blind me because everything's going, you know, backwards, all the lights going behind me. But yeah, that's something I really recommend if, if you do a lot of night fishing is put a couple of those lights on the back of your boat and you'd be surprised how much you use them. I always keep my bait cooler right here in the back right by my bait tray and then we'll go down here i'll show you my so i'll show you my pump setup i've got an automatic bilge pump and a manual bilge pump basically i've got one in case the other one quits working i hardly ever use a manual pump it's normally the the automatic pump that gets used and i also have a through hole pump it was actually the live well pump but i actually use it now for the tournament live well that i built and it comes right up through there and I put a hose on it, but I actually ended up using it to fill my bait tank up too. That wasn't originally something I thought would work, but it's really handy to fill my bait tank up. It keeps me from having to use a bucket. 
a lot of you guys that keep up with the channel, you probably probably know that I had a lot of motor problems when I bought this boat. It's an old motor. I think it's an 89 model. So, you know, when I first got it, I broke down a couple times out on the river, got stranded out there a couple times. The motor always ran good. It just had a lot of wiring problems. Uh, I kept losing fire and uh, had some starter issues, but it ends up being all wiring related stuff. So I rewired everything. I even rewired things that looked like they had already been rewired. I put a new wiring harness on it from the helm all the way back to the motor, new battery cables, new plug wires. If it had a wire on it, it got replaced and I haven't had any trouble out of it since. It runs great. Just wish it was a little faster. So that's about all I can think of right now. I'm sure I'm missing half the stuff that I had planned on talking about, but you know, it was just a quick video trying to answer some questions. I see a whole lot of questions, people asking questions about my boat. So I figured this would be the easiest way to answer them. Uh, but like I said, I'm sure I'm missing something. So if there's something you'd like to know, just leave a comment and ask me. I want to thank you guys for watching. We're going to get back to fishing here real soon. We'll have new fishing videos for you guys. But God bless you all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.